Hi, it's Nina from VR Focus. I am here joined by... Uh, Duncan Walker from Trash Games. So, tell me a little bit about this AR film. I saw it at Raindance Film Festival and I, I, I did filmmaking and my mind was blown. Tell me a little bit about it. So, the whole idea is that uh, I've used an iPhone and augmented reality to make a CGI film, a spectacular of some sorts. So, let me get this straight. For some, somebody who has never seen it before, right? You took an iPhone and you had pre-rendered mm. models. Yeah. And tell me the whole story. Okay. Like, why, how did you decide I'm going to make this AR thing and I'm going to scan someone's face and I'm going <laughs> to... Okay. So uh, I had some characters uh, already made and they're a bunch of robots with like guns and armor and stuff. And I decided to put them on the phone and go and walk around the streets and see what they look like there using the iPhone's AR kit. And that went well, and then I did another test, and then Rengarts got in touch, and they said, why don't you make a little little film and we'll show it, and that was it. So it's all these CGI characters, they're made ahead of time, stuck into the world through, through AR kit, and then I make a film. But there was also an actress whose mm -hmm. face was sort of captured with some type of technology and then she became a character in yeah. your film? So I 3D scanned uh, my friend Aoi, who uh, is actually a professional dancer and, and does uh, VR stuff as well. Uh, so we used photogrammetry to capture her and then video her again and it became the face of this robot uh, cyber woman who's, who kind of hunts down aliens. What was the feedback that you've gotten from people so far who've seen it, besides myself? Lots of CGI kind of film types uh, will pick up on the small bits that they would have done differently or that don't look quite right, but that's fine. And then other people who don't know much about this couldn't quite believe that it's done on a phone that you know, anybody has. And, but the content of the film, people like it. People think it's weird and, and strange and sort of out of this world, but grounded in reality, it's. It's filmed in the streets that they have been in, and they quite like that. Moving ahead, or mm -hmm. moving forward with this idea or this concept, are you looking to perhaps using this tool and giving it to other filmmakers? What, what are you trying to do with this technology? So, uh, on one hand, I want to make more films and kind of create and make all kinds of things that are in my head currently and put them on the screen. And the other is, by way of doing that, create some tools that other filmmakers could use and turn it into some kind of toolkit or product either on the computer or on the phone or combination of the two so that anybody can make these kind of... For augmented reality, does that mean I can sit at home uh, and take out, I don't know, maybe your future app or software and I can have the characters that you've created mm -hmm. and maybe interact with them? And sure. then maybe someone else across the world would be able to do the same thing? Yeah, so, so one of the ideas I've got is a kind of collaborative project where anybody anywhere in the world can film the same scene or the same set of scenes and share the footage with each other either online or, or however they do it you know in a central hub and it gets presented as an entire piece filmed by however many hundreds of people around the world if if, if that many people are keen on it or just a handful of, of kind of hand-picked uh, collaborators. So your background uh, do you come from gaming or do you come from filming? So, uh, both. Uh, when I was at university, I studied film and animation and special effects and stuff, and that's what I wanted to do, but I ended up doing programming and animation and ended up doing games, and now I've glued them together. It's, it's kind of come full circle. Do you feel like you're sort of in a role or you're at a period in time where both of the mediums are blending together? Yes. Making a film is very much like making a game these days. It's 3D assets, lots of animation. Uh, not much actual acting anymore, like it's, it's, it's so many animated characters. With what I'm doing is that it's exactly the same as making a game. Essentially I make a game, make game characters, but then turn them into a film. That's what I'm doing. Wow. <laughs> um, and how do you see the future of perhaps what you're doing? I'm not quite sure what category to put that in. Like, would it still know. be a film? Would it yeah, be a game? Because okay. you interact with it. Is it AR? Is it... Well, so, I mean, at the moment, the end product is something you watch like a film. It's a regular 2D film. But the way it's made uh, means that it could be distributed in any number of ways. It could be distributed where, you know, somebody has their phone, downloads an app, 
and then can watch the action wherever they are. Or if they're too lazy to do that, they can just go on YouTube. Are companies kind of like Snapchat or Facebook, have they approached you and gone like, we really like what you're doing, maybe we can take what you're doing and bring uh, it to... So not directly, but some people have approached me and said, you know, tell me about AR, tell me about what Snapchat are doing, tell me about what Apple are doing. And I have to tell them about what I'm doing, which, which is this kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, people have been getting in touch, I've been getting great response. People are saying, how do I get involved? How do I do this kind of stuff? Uh, you know, tell me more about it. And hopefully that will turn into something lucrative or kind of creatively interesting. But at the moment, lots of talking, lots of people interested, which is good. So how did you build it? Was it with Unity, Unreal? Mm -hmm. Which program did you use? Uh, so it's all built with Unity. Um, all the 3D characters are built you know, externally anyway, and they're brought into Unity, uh, told to animate, told where to go, and then stuck on an iPhone, and that's how it works. Usually animation takes a lot of time, especially yep. to render. How, how is this different? Was this a, you had to render it as well through the iPhone? Yeah, so uh, in a traditional kind of VFX uh, film setup, you film a few pieces on a, on a green screen and then spend months or years animating on top of that to make it look like it does in, when you see it in the film. Whereas this flips it around on its head and first you animate everything, then you take it to a location and film it all together at the same time as if it were live. Uh, but does that mean that sort of the scene has to be set already? You have to be at a specific angle with your iPhone? Uh, you no, can, you can no? be at any angle you like. Any angle. Uh, so for, for the things that I did, I made a handful of kind of specific scenes and, uh, and a bunch of non-specific scenes. So the specific ones, the character starts here, goes there, does a thing, and then that's There's an it. action. There's, yeah. Some action happens and some things happen. And then I can film that from any angle I want. I can do as many takes as I want, and it's always going to be exactly the same. Uh, the other types of scenes, the kind of less specific ones, are character walking around, for example. I can say, on the phone, while I'm here, I can say, click here, go there, then go there, then go there, and then they will just walk around, or they can follow me, oh, they can really? look at so me, I can tell them where to go wherever I am. And that's How did you do that on your phone? I mean, your phone's quite small to be able to uh, direct. Sure. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of controls on screen that I use to direct or, or kind of animate the characters while I'm filming it. And what this adds to it is a certain immediacy to, to what I'm doing and, and the way I'm and filming animated characters. It's, it's, it's kind of the opposite way of normally doing it. Normally you film real people and then animate animated characters. Uh, but once I'm in a location, I can say, you go here, you do that, you follow me, or play this animation, or turn around, or stop doing what you're doing, uh, just as I would an actor on set. And that's something quite new. I don't think people have really directed animated characters quite in the same way. Normally it's a guy in a motion capture suit, and then it becomes an animated character, whereas this is an animated character, it's a game character. But most of this is, is more of an action rather than an emotional response. So that, I, I guess that, that still needs some type so, of... So, yeah, at the moment it's, it's robots and aliens and stuff that don't really emote very much and they're, they're, not, you know, they're not concerned with those things. Uh, but, you know, I, I did scan someone in and there, there is a human face in there somewhere. <laughs> so in the future, yeah, that, that could be done as well. And then with the kind of lots of machine learning and AI and stuff, there's no reason you couldn't have a smart digital actor who can respond to voice, who can respond to the world around them. You could throw something into the scene and they would know how to react. You could have a person, a real actor, communicating with a virtual actor in the same location and I could film both of them at the same time. The robot characters that you create, are they able to, for example, I, when I looked at the film, you cut before they were able to walk through people. Or, sure. Uh, I, I guess in future, would they be able to distinguish where objects were and yeah. where to go? And um, at the moment, yeah, they're, they're quite stupid. Uh, they walk around and they don't care who's in the way. And, and actually, it looks quite bad when somebody does walk in the way. It ruins the illusion uh, that they were really there. But advances in hardware and cameras and scene analysis and all this kind of stuff would make that possible. They would be able to detect that something is in the way and they should stop or that, uh, you know, that they should pick something up or they should do something with a physical object much 
uh, much in the way that the kind of autonomous cars are doing now. They scan the environment, they know what's around, and they can make a decision. A virtual character could do that as well. Yeah, he, he knows as much about the world as the phone does, and yeah, that's exactly. quite a lot these days, yeah. so that's good. Is there one like particular type of software or hardware or thing that you're really excited for it to advance so you could really use it for your product? I don't know. Yeah, uh, what I really want to do is actually um, some kind of image analysis and, and kind of AI after or, or kind of while I'm filming, something that currently takes hours to, to kind of process images and stuff. But I want to have this live on the phone to do style transfer and deep learning, all this kind of stuff, to make these things look even better than they are now. That's, that's my, my goal for the future. Is there a website that we can go to to find out more information about what you're doing and if people out there are interested in perhaps funding you or helping you or you know, working on the same thing, where do they go? Uh, you can go to trashgames.co.uk or follow at trashgames on Twitter. Uh, yeah, please you know, get in touch about creative projects, about commercial projects, about you know, investment, all this kind of stuff. Uh, this is what I, part of what I, what I want to do. Thank you so much for that information. Please head over to vrfocus.com if you want to find out more about uh, what Trash Games are up to. And I will see you later.